The land of Surkhandarya has long been a convenient place for human habitation. The history of some ancient settlements here dates back to the 100 to 40,000 years BC. Archaeological excavations have uncovered even Neanderthal settlements. So, during the expedition to the Surkhandarya State Reserve, the film crew decides to photograph Zarautsoi, one of the places where such ancient monuments are preserved. It is located 100 100 to 110 kilometers north of Termas. As the group walks toward the monument, they get acquainted with the geological past of the reserve. Here, the rocks, which are more than 500 to 600 meters high, rise from the mountain. They are mainly composed of limestone, granite, and shale. In some places, there are layers of coal with a thickness of 50 to 150 centimeters, as well as igneous rocks. The eastern slopes of the Kuhitang mountain are steep, with many ravines and ditches. Such ruins are common in the northern part of the reserve. Along the way, you will see almond groves, which delight the eye and paint the surroundings in a wonderful color. Almond is also a hardy tree. Everyone can be sure of that here again. The expedition crew moves towards Zarautsoi while filming the local natural landscapes. The rock paintings here are the oldest rock paintings in the territory of Uzbekistan. They are rare examples of primitive art carved into the cave and arc stones in the Zarautsoi Gorge on the eastern slope of Mount Kuhitang. There is a place called Zaraut Kamar in the territory of Zarautsoi, meaning Zaraut Belt in English. Here are these belts. Such places are called belts. The reason we came here is that well, there are ancient Stone Age petroglyphs. According to a group of our scientists, these petroglyphs are 20,000 years old. Another group of scientists has speculated that the rock paintings are 10,000 years old. We can say that these works of art have survived to the present day and have risen to the level of genuine works of art. It's true that people who had down this did not say I'm a contribution to art or I'm an art expert 10,000 or 20,000 years ago but they spent their time they created it and it's amazing of course <laughs> The reason why the Surkhandarya oasis has long been a convenient place for people to live is due to its geological location. Due to this location, its climate is temperate. The Surkhan Oasis is such a natural place surrounded by mountains on three sides. Only the south side is slightly open. Here comes the warm air. A large part of the cold current is covered by these mountains. They afford the winter here is temperate, convenient for human habitation. Spring comes early. This also gives people a special convenience and ease. When spring comes early, the grass appears early. Trees bloom early and bear fruit also early. Winter comes late. In addition, the nature of this place is very rich. From time immemorial, the presence of wild pistachios, wild almonds and wild apples has helped people to survive here. This is because in the primitive community, people lived mainly on hunting and gathering because farming had not yet been discovered at that time. More than 2,000 paintings in Zarautsoi belong to the Mesolithic, Neolithic and later periods. Of course, it's not easy to watch and photograph them closely. It is difficult to get there because the pictures are located on steep mountain slopes and caves. Another noteworthy feature is that the paintings are drawn in the style of contours and shadows with red angop stone. Therefore, they should be watered to make them look better. 
Su sepkende gen kuyurun adı. We have just watered this place. It looks better when sprinkled with water. The only thing that stands out here is the Arabic inscriptions. We can study the pictures here dividing into the groups by size. The rock paintings are 40 to 40 centimeters, 60 to 40 centimeters, 60 to 80 centimeters, and 80 to 120 centimeters. This is 80 to 120 centimeters picture is an Arabic inscription. Now look at that one dimensional picture. We see that hunting scene is depicted. In the center of image placed a wild animal. It looks like a mule or a bull. We look at the chest and see that a bow or spear is stuck. It was surrounded by hunters. Here is first hunter. Here is the second one. They have weapons typical of that period. Those people wore strange things on their heads. Here is another hunter below. And here also you can see a hunter. There is also a hunter on this side. Here we can see a picture of a small dog. You see, there is a picture of a dog here. Look, the bull is completely surrounded by hunters. Here we can clearly see the hunting process of the primitive community of the time. We know that such hunting scenes can be found in other parts of the world. If you look at the history of chronology or service dogs, we get information that they have been trained for 5,000 or 7,000 years. Looking at this picture, looking at this picture, we can conclude that dogs in our country were domesticated even earlier. The reason is that we know that the first animal to be tamed by human hands was a dog. See, it is possible that the training of dogs 20,000 or 15 or 10,000 years ago began here. <laughs> So, Zarautsoi paintings depict the scene of people hunting wild bulls with the help of dogs. Animals, various objects, masked people are described in a unique way, very lively. Zarautsoi paintings are included in the Red Book for the protection of monuments as a unique monument of primitive art. There are also relatively late scripts here. As for the Arabic inscriptions, they are many ones. Some are clearly readable and some are very difficult to read. For example, the name Muhammad is written here. There is also this name is written. On the other side are larger inscriptions. There is a name Hussein. We see the name Ali. The question may arise as to why these records were written. Mankind has always tried to live a memory of itself. As a result of the same, these rock inscriptions may have written the name of the people who lived at the time. Since the state language, the documents were written in Arabic, after it became a part of the Arab Caliphate in the 10th and 12th centuries. There are other hypotheses too. For example, when the Arabs came here, there were religions like Zoroastrianism, Buddhism and Paganism. They were representatives of this religion. Then, after the advent of Islam, of course, there was a clash of religions and cultures. We know that in Islam, it was forbidden to draw pictures of living beings and animals. Hence, people may have written their names on these pictures in order to paint or erase them. Or it is speculated that prayers may have been written so that people would not worship these animals. The presence of such an ancient monument in the Surkhandarya State Reserve can make a worthy contribution to the development of tourism. All you need to do is be able to promote them internationally as needed. We are now in the Zarautsoi massifs of the Kizilolma branch of the Surkhandarya State Reserve. 
This massif is located on an area of more than 5,000 hectares. 395 hectares of this land have recently been allocated for the development of ecotourism. The purpose of the development of ecotourism here is the image of hunting spicemen made 10 or 20,000 years ago. Together with our researchers, we are reviewing eco roads for tourists. The work is currently being carried out by the reserve staff and the ecology committee. <laughs> Let's talk about the discovery of Zarautsoi paintings. As Zarautsoi paintings were first found in 1939, in 1940 to 1945, they were studied by archaeologists Parfionov and later by Raginskaya, Farmozov and Kabirov. These rock paintings were first discovered by Ivan Lomaev and his wife Yelena Lomaeva in 1939 with the help of locals. They then reported the photos of Parfionov, then director of the Surkandarva District Museum. They organized expeditions here in 1942-1943. Scholars point out that the rock paintings here are covered and stretched in terms of style and creation. The main raw materials used were natural red dyes. Our scientists emphasize that the style of work is very close to the style of the famous Altamira cave in Spain. If you focus here, we don't have to be an expert to know that records aren't written at the same time. Pay attention to these notes. It is visible by its size, color, style and the beauty of the calligraphy. Sure, such rare monuments have not survived much in the world. That's why these monuments, which talk about the life of ancient people, should be preserved. Horses and camels have been making people's weight lighter and farther close for many years. It's true, today they have been replaced by modern technology. Nevertheless, they too have a place in our lives. Veteran of labor Ishkuvat Norboyev is interested in raising horses and camels. This is not in vain, because camel's milk is rich in amino acids and iron, and it's a cure for many diseases. The horses here are also involved in Kupkare races. Ishkulvat Norboyev points out that they will not return empty-handed from the competitions. Some of the camels here have also been captured with the help of these horses, he said. In addition, horseback riding has a positive effect on health. There are many breeds of horses. Some are used in free transportation, while others only participate in races. Nowadays, horse breeding is highly developed all over the world. If you classify horse breeds, the first place is occupied by Arabian horses. On the second place is the Akhaltike breed of Turkmenistan. 
we can easily say that our carabiner black horses are in the third place. The advantage of our horses is that they are universal horses. The carabiner breed can be a working horse, can pull a cart, can drive a car and can do other things. It also eats very little food. When it comes to the horse, of course, it's impossible not to mention the saddle. The history of saddles and saddle making dates back to the time when humans began to tame and ride wild animals, more precisely to the second half of the first millennium BC. It varies according to the type of the saddle invented for daily riding, sports, military riding, exercise or racing. In addition, each nation has created its own saddle types based on its own living conditions. Saddles are basically slightly different in structure and decoration, but the overall structure is similar. Traditions of handicrafts, especially saddles, are also an integral part of the cultural heritage of our people. As long as serious attention is paid to its preservation, it will be passed down from generation to generation and will be preserved for centuries.